What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pitbox Social. It's your host, Tyler Hoffman, also here with your our new host, coming onto the show in a bigger role, Mr. Patrick Wildman, Wildman Wilmot, Woo! Uh, joining us for from here on out. And uh, unfortunately, Mr. Adam Succulo is actually not with us today. He has a paralyzed vocal cord, which only Adam would be the one to figure out how to do that. Um, so we wish him a speedy recovery, but we thank him for hopefully editing this anyway, and uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see how far off the rails this goes without him. Yeah, now that y'all brought me on, there's going to be a lot more editing going on. So yeah, no kidding. So we brought Pat in, and then Adam's out for a week. So Adam will still get to have plenty of. Uh, he'll have his hands in this to make sure it doesn't go too far off the rails. <laughs> but uh, excited to be joining everybody here from the Upper S's of Virginia International Raceway. Uh, you can kind of make out there. Uh, we're up here for a champ car this weekend and drove up last night from Red Atlanta. And uh, But things have been busy, right, Pat? So you guys were just at Nashville last weekend. How'd that go? Yeah. Uh, well, that that race is always pretty awesome, right? So <clears throat> streets of Nashville. Uh, I was up there coaching my kid, Stephen Clemens, in the uh, GR86 Cup. I mean, that whole weekend is incredible to begin with uh, between IndyCar and the jumpy trucks and you know, everything that they have going on. So it was good. I mean, Steven had, had, we only got one race in because the first race got, um, got rained out, like almost rained out, but it was lightning out. There was like a major storm coming in. Um, and he was supposed to race at like eight fifteen at night. Damn, and, man. um, so yeah, so they, they canceled it and we only ran one race on Sunday, but he did good, man. Uh, 16th to ninth. So, um, not a bad, run. yeah, not a bad run. So, uh, we'll take that momentum going into Road America uh, next week. So we leave on Wednesday to uh, or Thursday to get up there next week for Road America. So good weekend. It was fun. Um, didn't get to party like I normally do for that weekend. So that was a little bit of a bummer. But you know, we made money instead of spending it. So yeah, that's good. I mean, they say <laughs> with age comes responsibility or something like that. But that's good. I think it's better I, to. I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you might be. I don't know. No, I mean, uh, kind of. Yeah, kind of. We'll, we'll get a little <laughs> bit there. Well, that's good. Man. Yeah, top ten runs, awesome. So, where are they going to do the makeup race? Or the um, you know, I don't know. I would assume Road America, just because it's next. But I haven't heard. Um, so I don't know. I don't have that answer yet. Are you excited about you that? that are you, so, do you get to drive the car at all in '86? I drove at VIR. We had a. Um, I guess a one test day or something like that at VIR. So okay. I got one session in it just to kind of see what it's like and then do a setup for him. And um, it was really beneficial, I think, for for everybody because um, Steven's still learning the the ropes on what a car feels like when it's doing certain things. So it's better to have somebody like me to come in and say, like, hey, the car's doing this. And it kind of teaches him to um, – of what he's actually feeling, right? So uh, it was good. I mean, I'll be honest, the car was way slower than I thought it was going to be, um, but it's cool, you know. I guess it's a good, it's a good intro car. So third gen X five speed or what's what's comparable? I think it's I think it's just a touch quicker than the MX five Cup cars. Oh, the, um, like the current ones. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's just a little bit quicker, um, but. I'll be honest, man. Like I, maybe it's just because I ran a mix five cup. I've got kind of a, a soft spot for that car over this one. That, but that's just me. But, I think um, we all do. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's new too, right? Like GR eighty six is new. The the Cup series is new. So you know, maybe over time it'll that'll change and and we'll start to love it. So that's good. And there's like, I mean, there's a decent amount of money behind it as far as you know, oh, leading the opportunity for these kids. You know, I can see yeah. what, what the yeah, the they pay, uh, there. yeah, dude, they pay uh, first through eighth. Um, so you're yeah. making money. I think I think eighth is still getting like two grand or three grand, something like that. So oh, come on, Steven, you missed it by one spot. I dude, it's the second time he's missed it by one spot this season too. And it's like, God, oh, come on, man, get like, the money, baby. Just a That's little awesome. bit. Yeah, yeah, it's been good though, man. It's uh, it's been a good good learning experience year for him as well. So, all good. Yeah. Awesome. Right on. So yeah, we had um, national. So I haven't I haven't made it to that race yet because we always have a conflict. Uh, yeah. It always seems to end on end up on our Road America weekend for IMSA, um, <clears throat> and then 
next year we're actually at least Super Trofeo isn't going to go to Road America. They just released the calendar for us, and uh, if we end up there next year, so maybe next year I'll actually make it to that race and I'll go do the part yeah. for you. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, I, it seems like it seems like next year SRO might not be there um, oh, okay. because they they've changed the track layout for next year. Oh, and that's a good, paddock, good design. Yeah, the, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the paddock is like. Uh, I don't know, like a third of the size of what it is, what it has been the past three years. So I like, they're cutting a bunch of the support races that are going to be there. So I don't, I honestly don't even think we're going to, going to be there. I heard we won't be. So we'll see. Yeah. But so we'll get to party. All right. (laughs) That's what really matters. That or hopefully we'll end up in like TA2 or something else. That'd be cool too. That's really what I want to do there is run the TA2 race. Yeah, me too. I'd like to party and run the TA2 race. That sounds it sounds good. I, don't, I want to do it in the opposite order, but yes. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, I don't know, man. Bottle, bottle the throttle, you know. We might be able to set a new record there. Dude, I'm too old for that. that <laughs> shit. I can't. I had one drink last night. I drove up here from Road Atlanta last night and got here. And I actually didn't get here that late. It was like 1030. And um, the guys had a drink waiting on me. I walk in the door, had a drink. And it's like, all right, I'm going to bed. Like, so you're like what? <laughs> yeah. you're, just, like, you're the last one to get here and the first one to go to sleep. And it's like, you're damn right I am. Loser. But, yeah, I know. Right? It's like, but I was also the only person ready to get into the car this morning at 830. So, oh, well, there you go. There's, there's a, a trade off. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. But, no, it was good. It's good. So, yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's good, man. Uh, we did the so Kingpin, we did the WR race with um, Open Throttle at Road Atlanta recently, and that was a GP only race, which was really rad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was GP one, two, and three. Car count was like 36, 37 cars, I think. So not a ton of cars for Road Atlanta, um, but spread out between three classes. So I think it was like we had like 16 cars in our class, and then it was like 10 apiece in the other ones, the other two classes. And uh, two first timers, we partnered with Open Throttle for that one, and they lent us their GTO M3, which was actually a really sweet car. I don't know if you've driven that one yet. I haven't, dude. They sound awesome, though. Dude, it's sick. Like, uh, like the car, the car's super stable. It's got the big old nine lives wing on it, and um, I mean, we. It was just the hardest thing was keeping. It was so hot keeping tires and brakes on the car, just because everything was just melting in the hundred degree weather. But dude, um, it was car, mega hot that weekend. Yeah, dude, it was. Yeah, it was big. It sucked. Um, but we had two guys, uh, Jr. and Charlie. It was their first ever race. And uh, both of them got through incident free, ran on pace uh, for where where they needed to be, and uh, you know we finished fifth fifth on Sunday, and then we where did we finish? I think we finished sixth on Saturday. Um, bad. No, we ran great. So we actually didn't even finish the last two hours of the race on Saturday because we smoked the brakes, and uh, <laughs> like normally a fan, I won't name the company, but. Um, uh, it's the, I guess they're made in batch orders and the pads like this batch doesn't mm. last 10 to 12 hours like the other batches do. Is it COVID batch? Yeah, dude, <laughs> right? And back to those COVID tires. That was a tragedy. But uh, <laughs> so we smoked the pads in six hours and Charlie not only had his first race, but he also had his first brake failure. And, oh, uh, yeah. so <laughs> That's uh, always exciting. Yeah, he was thrilled. He loved that. <laughs> like, Where yeah. was it? Uh, 10. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah, it was a good place for it ah. to happen. There's a great shot. Like he got a screen clip, a screen grab from the, the broadcast. And like, it's just flat out through the rocks, trucking through back over to the, the drift loop. Nice. And uh, the commentators are pretty funny. It's like, yeah, that car had no interest in slowing down. Like, <laughs> Char- but, Charlie's like, I found a shortcut. <laughs> I racing. Would have it together. It probably would have been a pretty decent lap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's but, awesome. No, yeah, he was. It's yeah, you know, it's tough. There's a lot going on, and then to have your first mechanical failure, like something like that, happen, like that, it uh, it can definitely shake you a little bit. But he he did a good job and, and just dealt with it. And everybody, you know, things happen in endurance racing, and you take it in stride, move on, and that's part of the jam. Yeah, man, shit yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> so that was good. And then we went to Road America last weekend with IMSA and the Super Trofeo Series. Uh, we finished third on Saturday. And, uh, and then we're later assessed a 44 second post-race time penalty for not serving a drive through that we didn't receive until after the race. Um, we entered, I entered a pit lane that was open. So they gave us a penalty cause it should have been closed. And, uh, <laughs> God, I, love it. 
dude, it's freaking. I'm honestly, it's like IMSA. Is, it's just whose line is it anyway? Like, hey, love the it's series. It's all made up. It's all made up, and the points don't matter, right? Yeah, except the championship points. Like those ones kind of matter, <laughs> which they just took half of our points from the race. Yeah. So we went from third to sixth, and uh, you know, I spent hours upon hours of talking to the race director, trying to. I mean, just like he. I feel like I was heard, but like. A real consideration, I don't know if it was really taken. And, um, and like the turns, you know, if something gets messed up, like it's never overturned. So yeah. it just seems to be a part of the culture. It's like if, if they do, if something, if they miss something or whatever, they just go, oops. <laughs> and, and then they, I, I, I <laughs> go, ah. but like, I just, it's really, really frustrating. And, um, like, so I understand sweet. mistakes <laughs> happen, but like, let's, if we can get it right, let's get it right. The yeah. light wasn't on at pin entry. So, like, what else? You know, that's what we base everything off. Like, and yeah. that's what they tell us in the driver's meeting. And then, like, it comes race time. And now, like, so what, like, now my whole thing is just, like, when we go to pit lane, it's, like, how do I know if I'm actually allowed to be on pit lane? Because right. I got right. a penalty for being on pit lane when it was open. Yeah. And then, I don't know. So, that's that sucked. And then we had some contact in the race one. And then uh, it with a, the the contact or the damage didn't show up until the beginning of race two, which broke the wing. So it yeah, was had that, that active arrow didn't look like it was working too, too Dude. well. Wesley, my man, Wesley did a great job of not <laughs> keeping, for not putting not, that car in the wall. Yeah. Uh, not really. Yeah. Like the, the, he's coming around. So he came through and like, he's probably in five or maybe he's back in the kink. He's like, well, this is not the car we had yesterday. It's okay, like you know, like you know, we would made some some minor changes, and it's like, all right, like sometimes things change overnight, I guess. He comes down the front straight, and the wing is just like, <laughs> like oh yeah, yeah. Uh, please, the slow please slow down, please slow down. You're on the. I haven't watched the full race broadcast, but what I've heard is like people were saying uh, that the broadcaster was like, yeah, he's going to bring that to pit lane, and Wesley just comes wow, down yeah. the front straightaway, hundred. <laughs> But normally we do like 168, 170 miles an hour. He's probably doing like almost 180 with no wing on the back of the car. Dude, I watched the same thing. I was like, I was like, all right, well, they're done. He's coming to pit lane. He's like, Meow. and I was like, dude, what? It's like another. Well, what are you gonna do? Like the, the wings, <laughs> the wings done. Like you just you're gonna come to pit lane, and we're out of it anyways. Like just yeah. see if he can circulate, and and he was gonna stay out as long as. Uh, as long as IMSA was going to let him. So uh, talk about just rolling with the punches. Like it doesn't get, doesn't get much uh, worse than that in a sense. Whereas, and yeah. what's crazy is like, so we've got a camera in the car. We've got two side mirrors, obviously. And um, with these three optical optics, like you can't see the wing. So like you can't see the, the wing in the mirrors, the cameras below the wing. So you can't like, he had no idea this thing was coming off. Yeah. Um, so it really kind of makes you think is like you do have like some side to side or car to car contact, which is very frequent in the series. Um, you know, wing could be coming off. You don't even know it. Like, yeah, dude, that's scary because like you think about uh, especially at a track like Road America, you think about uh, Catherine Legs wreck up there yeah. when she when her rear wing fell off of the car <laughs> and you go through the kink back there and there's no downforce on the rear of the car and it came right around. She had that massive accident. It's like, dude, that's that's some scary shit <laughs> to, to not know if it's on there or not at that point. Yeah, that was brutal. I am uh, I'm proud of him for for taking taking care of the car and, and getting it staying out. You know, there was never you never called to be like, I need to come in or anything like that. He was just going to deal with it. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty stellar. Uh, Way to be a man, Wesley. Way to man. Yeah. You're young, but you're you're becoming a man. He sure like is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was that was our weekend at Road America. The new surface was real interesting. Um, we're we're on a different tire this year, um, but ultimately it did feel like the we had more grip overall, and uh, at least online. Whereas we found offline there was significantly less grip for anyone that drove or watched the race. I'm sure you could see where <clears throat> all of the the passing that was attempted to be executed typically ended up in somebody getting doored or ran off the track because yeah. if you're not on the outside of the track or you're not online, then there's just no grip. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I heard, I heard like that new asphalt has like a dust that's, that's as it's being broken in, the asphalt's like becoming really dusty. It's like falling apart kind of. And that's what's, that's what's laying on the outside of the corners and everything is like this fine dust and you get into it and it, you've got no grip. They, they said it's like there's less than 50% traction out there. It's that's just, crazy. 
Yeah, it's pretty so nice. NASCAR plotted it. Uh, Goodyear plotted it particularly. They found there was thirty five percent less grip <laughs> offline, and they I think they plotted. They went around the track three times, so I assume they did like left, right, center. Yeah, and then, um, but like the you know the prototypes couldn't pass the the GTD cars on the outside of the carousel. Uh, what's really interesting is when you walk the track, go look at like the exit of the carousel and like online, you can see where it's like the pavement is all like aggregated and like ripped up. Mm -hmm. And then, like you go offline three feet to the left, like it is just smoother than shit. Like, really? Uh, yeah, it's super, super smooth. So like there's that'll be, no grip. <laughs> that'll be super interesting with the uh, uh, Jerry 86 cup being there next week and, you know, being three and four wide on that track and yeah i'm, I'm sure nobody will go off there <laughs> it'd be great yeah, steven just needs to drive like it's uh like it's an endurance race honestly like yeah anyway, whoever can who can you can take the calculated risk at the right times will then get away with it will be the one that obviously gets up the farthest but i think there's going to be so much carnage that you just kind of hang out and stay alive yeah um yeah i'm trying well, to this <clears throat> this will be Steven's first time returning to road America, uh, since his accident there last year. Um, oh, so right. it's kind of, a, yeah, it's like, you know, I'm sure it's in the back of his head, but, um, but I mean, dude, he was, even after that wreck, he was back in a car in six weeks or something like that, seven weeks. So it didn't like on a mental standpoint, it didn't, I don't think it messed him up too bad. So awesome. um, to be young, man, that's great. I know. Right. I <laughs> do. I don't know if I would have had that, that quick of a return, you know. For those of you that don't know, uh, Stephen Clemens, Pat's coaching client, uh, had there was a big crash at Road America in between turn seven and eight, and Stephen was in the pink car. No, basically, one car went off at the exit of seven, got spun around, and then like cars were dodging, trying to. They were just barely missing him, and then Stephen, like the car in front of Stephen, jumped out of the way, and he had nowhere to go, and ran yeah. into that kid head on. It was like it was like two tenths of a second. Or something like that. Two or three tenths of a second between the car in front of him moving and him hitting the car. So I mean, like, there's nothing he could do. It's 96 mile an hour head on impact, and uh, dude, both of those kids are super lucky, you know, to to still be here because the engines were sitting inside the inside the cars. That's wild. Both cars. It was man, it was insane. But yeah, I'm glad they're both okay. Yeah. yeah and speaking cool. of, uh, I want to talk about JCD real quick. Um, my teammate, John Capestro Dubetz, had a big crash last weekend. Uh, he got turned at the exit of Canada and hit the wall head on at about 88 miles an hour. And uh, he fractured two vertebrae, but he's he's up and walking and he's good, like in good spirits. And uh, I hope him a speedy recovery and and uh, he'll be back in a car later this year, no doubt. But yeah. uh, that was that was a tough one, especially, you know, as a friend and a teammate that sucked. To, and we, we don't want to see anybody get hurt or anything like that, but they start popping the, the top of the car off to get, to get somebody out. You know, it's not great. Yeah. But. There's a few people I'd like to see get hurt, but JCD is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. I'm just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> oh, man, that was big. I'm glad he's all right. Like, uh, and I, I looked at, I actually had, because he was, you know, one of our teammates, I had the opportunity to, uh, to look at the tub and everything. And like that car looked rock solid. Like yeah. every knee belt, they built a hell of a race car and they did a really great job to, to build a safe car for us to race. And I mean, the seat looked good. The, the cage looks cage looked unfazed. Um, yeah. You know, there was a lot of, a lot of damage and debris. The car went airborne. Like there was a lot that went on in the front of the car, but, um, but, but as we know, that's a good thing. You know, the yeah. more, the crazier the crash looks and the more energy that comes off of the car is typically a good thing because that means that's the more energy being dissipated from the crash. Correct. So, yep. um, speaking of crashes, uh, somebody I know recently had a crash uh, about 24 uh, hours ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 23. About 23 yeah. hours ago, yeah. Yeah, it was good. Um, do you yeah. want to tell us about that? Or do we do, do we need to skip this topic? No, nah, nah, it's fine. It's fine. I would love to talk about it. Um, yeah, I, had, uh, I was in the right seat of a um, Lotus yesterday. And... Um, Driver I was with made made a mistake. He was pretty green and uh, made a mistake coming out of 10B at Road Atlanta, and we ended up hitting the uh, hitting the bridge on the uh, right side. So um, that sucked. It was uh, about fifty about fifty miles an hour. Or so I would say 
as we hit the wall. But um, it's just one of those things, man. I mean, you know, shit happens. And the longer we do this stuff, it's going to happen to everybody. Um, but I will say this or yesterday is the last time I will be right seating. Um, I'm done. I hit I hit the turn 12 wall earlier this year. Not hard, thankfully, but in the right seat again in a GT3. And nice. um, I just, dude, I, it, it's not worth it to me anymore, man. The, uh, the money's great, but dude, I, maybe if I was younger, like, you know, and recover quicker, but like, dude, I don't, as I'm sure you feel the same way, like I do not recover the way that I used to. And um, I know it only gets worse as we get older. So dude, it's just not, it's not worth it. I don't want to, I don't want to die in the right seat, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, this is like, well, that's, I want to talk more about the specifics, but like, and that's kind of the natural progression we see, right. And in, in our sport where it's like, you know, guys that do what we do that are full-time coaches, instructors, and racers, like, you know, you, at, when we're younger, you're these, you know, these kids, you, you kind of got to earn your place. So you got to ride right seat and you, you yeah. got to build your name and you got to be, you know, you do what it takes to, to build and grow a business. Um, but like once you, you kind of have some rapport and you've got your regulars and you've got a good client base, like you don't, like I don't really, I don't ride in the right seat anymore. Um, yeah. I will do it for certain people on certain, like, you know, certain events where it's like, okay, you know, trust it. Like I'll ride with Wesley all day. Like I'll hop in with him. And uh, if we're going somewhere and he's learning a new track and we're going to race WR or whatever, like yeah. we'll hop in with him and it'll, you know, that way we can knock out learning a track in three laps. So riding with someone that's, you know, a novice or something like that is, is tough. So I mean, shout out to all those guys that do that. Yeah. Um, but it's years and all that, but it's, it's, it's hard. It's scary to think about like these guys that do it every single weekend, you know, with, with these track day organizations and they're doing it for free just to get free track time. Like that's, it's so scary, dude, because you never know who you're getting in the car with. You don't know if they're going to listen. Like, you don't know if the, if there's going to be a, some kind of failure, like, like Charlie had, you know, like you might have a brake failure somewhere. Um, or you might have car to car with another car that lost his brakes or something like that. I, I saw that happen at road Atlanta as well, man. We got, um, going down into 10 on, on one of the uh, track days and Aston Martin lost his brakes, dude. It went, sailed it down, you know, into 10 and ended up in the door of a, of a BMW right in front of us. And, um, I mean, it's something that never happens, but dude, it's like, you know, what's the risk versus reward here. Um, and we got, you know, we got careers to look after and things are starting for me to go really well. And like, I don't, I'm selling the R6 and I'm not riding in the right seat anymore. Like I, it's, I'm growing up, dude, I'm growing up and, and I'm not. See, there it is. There it is. I know. I know. It's I still, I'm, I'm struggling with it though, right? Because like, man, I don't want to get older. I, I still want to be older. It's just you're turning the page of new opportunities, man. Like you gotta, you, you're part of growth, right? And like you outgrow certain things, and then you just, you, you gotta drop the lower stuff to to get the higher stuff. So yeah, I guess so. But uh, I think the I think the moral of the story that I can say from yesterday is um, when you hire somebody like us to ride with you it's probably a good idea to listen to what they have to say, right? This guy, this was his third track day ever, right? And I've been doing this, I've been coaching for 15 years. And when I tell you to do something or not to do something, you need to listen to what that is, right? And this situation could have been avoided easily. Like it, it, it would have easily been fixed had he just listened to what I was saying. And he, and he, told me that we we hit the wall we came to a stop and we both asked each other if we were all right and then the next the next thing he told me is i heard what you were saying and i didn't do it and i was like yeah that's like there's yeah there's nothing for me to say after that like yeah dude we just crushed a car and in a wall we hit an immovable object at 50 miles an hour dude yeah and of all came, of the ones that hit that's probably one of the, the worst ones at road atlanta you know and like i will say dude I don't think they used to have a tire wall there, but they did this time. Is there a tire wall there? There, there is now up against the concrete. Well, thank, thank, you. thank God, dude, because like that That's would have good. hurt way worse against. Yeah, the dude, you were like, you came and sat next to me during lunch yesterday, and I was like, and you told me that you just cra like you just had a crash, and I was like, you seem fine. Like, how are you not <laughs> jacked up? It's a concussion. Uh, yeah, maybe. maybe that. You, you didn't have a beer in your hand yet, so I was like, yeah, yeah this is. I wanted, I wanted one though. <laughs> so, all right. So the the airbags did deploy, yes. Yeah. 
So I mean, that's a pretty big impact. Like, and you know, that was your first time experiencing an, uh, an airbag deployment. Yeah. Right. And like, I've never experienced one. And like, we, you know, I experienced some, some bumps and stuff, but nothing like nothing too big, I guess, like at Porsche back in the day or. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so, I mean, airbags went off. There's always been a big topic about like airbags or helmets. Right. They were both. Um, you know, do you think that the airbag had a factor in it? Like as far as I think it helped hurt it. Like, you know, I think guess the concern with the helmet, like a full face helmet, especially is like it pushes the helmet into your face. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I could think about it too. Like I could see with the helmet on, if you hit the airbag, I guess in a certain angle with a full face, like it might twist your head or something. Mm. I could see that happening too. Like, um, and maybe hurting your neck more or something like that. Um, I, <clears throat> honestly, like I can't, I, I don't have a, a good answer, uh, to whether or not it helped or not. The, I definitely hit it. Um, I think I'm happy it was there because I just had a lap belt on and I didn't have like a, I didn't have a Simpson harness or anything like that. He did. So I don't think he actually reached the airbag on the steering wheel. Um, but I, I definitely hit the, hit the airbag. And it was at first, like when I thought about it, I didn't think I did, but um, the bag itself was like in my lap basically. So Mm -hmm. I know, I know I reached it. Um, but I think it's a good thing in this, in this situation. I think it was a good thing because, um, I, I don't know how far I would have gone more forward, you know, had it not been there. Um, but I, you know, this morning and last night and stuff, I definitely feel like my neck and my, my shoulders and and upper back and everything are definitely sore, you know, so it's just typical whiplash stuff. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I think in this situation it did, but I could see how I could see how it potentially could be a bad thing having a helmet on, you know, maybe turn your head the wrong way or something. Yeah, that was I mean that was a big topic that like I talked to quite a few about a few people about other instructors just because it always like you know that's a concern if you're wearing helmets then like you know no airbags if you're not wearing a helmet then sure uh, yeah then you probably should have airbags on. But like most people, that's something most people don't think about when they're putting their car on track either is like, do you turn the airbags off or on or you leave them on? So that's interesting. It's good to hear, I guess, that they were on and, you know, they helped out. They yeah. Their intended I think about like, more. I, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think about too, like um, a, more of a side impact with not having a helmet on. If you hit the window with your, with yeah. out a helmet or like hit the B pillar or something like that, I feel like that's probably, you know, probably not a good thing if it's a car that doesn't have one of those side you know, airbags or something. I mean, maybe all cars have them now, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that's the only time that I could see it like, kind of, kind of go for the helmet over not having one, you know, regardless yeah, of the airbags or not. Well, from airbags, like, so from somewhere where we both used to work for a couple of years, uh, where we didn't wear helmets, it was interesting. <laughs> and we didn't have airbags, apparently. I, that's it, it exactly. Like, there was never an airbag deployment in the freaking two, three years we were, the two years we were there. Yeah. Like, not once did an airbag ever go off. And there were some big ass hits, dude. I yeah. mean, there were 70 mile an hour impacts. It's like, where's the bags? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, dude. <laughs> Nothing. It's just like, and then you drive by, like, you see somebody that got, like, tapped a, at an intersection and like the airbags have gone off yeah. like how like yeah. this doesn't make any sense so either they have that they have the best armco in the world <laughs> that's the softest it, softest ever <laughs> that's all i can think of like it's other unless something might be going on with the cars because hmm. hmm. uh, uh, i'm sure it's not good for uh for some pre-production or just cars in general when it's a manufacturer based program and airbags are going off yeah, well, also, like, what's the protocol after a bag does go off? Like, I wonder, you know, I wonder if it's just easier to disable them and not have to worry about it, just fix the car and not have to be on the inside, you know, fixing airbags and all that kind of crap. And then you can also sell the car later and be like, oh, airbags never deployed and like that kind of stuff, you know, like small, minor impact. <laughs> adult driven, weekends only. Yeah, adult driven, 70 mile an hour impact, very minor. Uh, I think that. I, you know, we want to give safety people that, you know, people put, do the the right thing and, you know, safety comes first instead of third. Uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, it's, that's definitely a part of it. Cause like once an airbag goes off, like, doesn't the car become salvage titled anyways? I th- right. That's what I think. So, so like, it's, it's almost vital to the, to the resale. Cause those cars get CPO'd and sold. Yeah. Um, as I found out through a, 
somebody I coached there uh, that yeah. later reached out and was like, hey, oh, yeah. you're, you're Patrick, who, you, Wilmot, Melvin, and Trevor have your phones Bluetooth to this car. Yeah, all well, oh, your that. iPhones are in here. How is that possible? And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, Poor guy, dude. That's and awesome. then I tried to explain because, like, we'd name all the cars there, and I was like, "Oh!" And I tried to like spin it for him, and like, "Oh, this this car's name was Rebecca," and uh, you know, it's actually like each car has its own little uh, kind of personality, and and he's like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me?" He's like, "My ex wife's name is Rebecca," and I'm like, "Oh my oh, god!" god. <laughs> it's like I'm done. I'm absolutely done. I, was like, I thought I spun that thing around so well, and I was like, oh, "I'm so sorry." Like, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, it was bad. I felt like such an asshole, and it wasn't even my fault. I remember that. That was uh, that was that was February of 2021. So I remember where I was when that happened. <laughs> I just felt like the biggest uh, poor guy. This dude just learned that he picked up a car that's been completely ragged out, and <laughs> and it's named after his ex-wife. <laughs> probably that's just funny. like his, probably just like his ex-wife. That's, oh, that's that's <laughs> oh, damn. Sorry. That's, he's a really nice guy. He's a cool dude. I just like, I was like, that sucks. Like, and, for the record, I don't know who it is. So I don't know. His yeah, name. he doesn't. I'm the only person that knows him. He was, uh, he was the last, I think he was the last person I ever did uh, an experience with at that, at that place. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. So, um, yes. oh, so do you, so, all right. You weren't wearing a Simpson, right? No. Do you think that would have made a difference? Uh, probably. I'm sure it would have. Um, okay. I just, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like Simpson stuff seems so NASCAR to me, which just sounds stupid. You know who? Uh, you know who Simpson just bought, right? Uh, I think you told me, but I forgot. Stilo. Did they? All right. Yeah. Well, great. So here, you have a, right. you have a a very fancy uh, yeah. Simpson helmet. So yeah, perfect. All right, cool. that's good. And and yeah, I'll shove my foot in my mouth now. Um, <laughs> No, they, I just, I don't know, dude. Like, I've never wanted to wear one of those things. I don't, I don't like the shit that goes over my body and stuff. I think it's so stupid. It's like, I feel like I'm in the karting days wearing those uh, rib protectors and stuff. I and, saw someone uh, wearing, wearing a rib protector on a car the other day, off topic. But Oh, really? Um, yeah. <sighs> don't know G- <laughs> Gotta protect yourself from those Gs, man. <laughs> dude, I think it was an MX-5 kid at Road America. I'm not even kidding. Awesome. That's yeah. rad. It was. Uh, I was like, maybe he's injured. Yeah, that could Anyways. be. All right, maybe. That's but yeah, dude, I, I think it probably. I'm sure it would have helped. I mean, like, I this guy didn't even seem phased, right? And I was like, <laughs> dude, I was like, I had a headache all day. I was like, fuck. That's but uh, um, yeah, I'm sure it would have helped. I just, I don't know, man. I'm a man, and I didn't want to wear one. So. All right. Well. <laughs> now here I am paying the price. All right, Dale. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're gonna be, yeah, dude. One of us is gonna get killed in the yeah, right dude. seat. It's gonna be mandate mandated after that. Yeah, I'm so. So, honestly. So I'm actually so shocked that like organizations don't uh, they don't require that. You know, like yeah. as far as like not even a liability thing anymore. But like a Hans, you can get a Hans for three hundred bucks. You can get a Sim- oh, Simpsons. The base Simpsons the same price. Um, like why? if you're spending X, you're spending way more than that on a track day, like, or even an instructor or whatever, like then yeah. just have buy the piece of equipment, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I, I guess I do wish it was mandatory because I think it's a good thing and it's good for the sport. And, yeah. Well, yeah. dude, I didn't even, I didn't even wear a Hans until like 2011, maybe like I, I raced for a, at least a year without one uh, in the Mustang, like an SCCA. Really? Yeah. It was, it wasn't mandated. And um, I don't think it was mandated until like 2011 in SCCA, dude. So like that's how that's how old school those guys are. Like I mean, they're all 80. They're all 80 years old now, but they're they're definitely living the living the old school life. Senior Car Club of America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you don't even own a Hans, technically. Technically, I don't. Yeah, that's true. You, technically, you don't it's, even own it's, a Hans. <laughs> it's Ross Monkton's. <laughs> you got Ross's, and then don't you have mine? Yeah, I still have yours too. Yeah. I still have yours at the house. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah, technically, way. technically, I, I don't have one. So, but yeah, it, stupid dude. So so dumb. I was like, yeah, I don't. What is it? Six hundred fifty bucks? No, that's like that's, <laughs> a, that's 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 a tire. I'm not I'm not buying that crap. Not so, a chance. <laughs> not not a chance, dude. Yeah, not a chance. real smart. 
See, no, that's if you get the Simpson, like the NASCAR boys, then you just wear it. You can wear it in the race car. You can yeah. wear it in the right seat. You can wear it in a street car. You can wear it. You could every day. You can wear it on the way to take Nacho to the dog park. You just yeah, pop on your true. helmet. Well, I mean, hell, at the, dude, at the rate I'm going right now, I'm sure my doctor is going to be like, yo, there's a helmet and, and a Simpson in your future for everyday use based on, on uh, the inactivity of your brain waves. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll get faster. I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of the fastest race car drivers are pretty dumb. So, um, you know. I feel like also some of the, the, the quick guys are also very smart. Yeah. Well, I think it goes, you know, there's two personalities to it, right? Like, I think I definitely fall in the retarded and fast, <laughs> you know, side yeah. of that. I'm definitely so not, I know, I'm no, no Einstein over here. So no, you're, you're dumb and quick for sure. <laughs> thank, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As other people would say, at least you're pretty. Yeah. Well, I hear that all the time. And, and, that's been the story of my life. Well, at least he's, at least he's somewhat good looking. He's, he's fucking dumb. <laughs> All other accounts were very much going on. Dude's dumber than a bag of hammers. <laughs> well, all right. So by Simpson, where your, where your head and neck restraint. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would you, so uh, that's what I just thought about was um, now, would you like, I know you said you wouldn't right seat ever again. But, like, do you think there's a difference between right seating in a street car versus a race car? I think it's safer in a race car, for sure. You know, I mean, with, with I mean, new race cars, at least, you know, like the GT4 stuff, like, those things are, are freaking bomb-proof, dude. You can watch some of the wrecks those guys have week in and week out, and they just walk away from everything, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely safer. I mean, uh, those cars, with, with the way the cages and everything are built now are – so much so much safer dude so um with that said like i, I still don't want to be in one in the right seat <laughs> um i i just dude i just reached this point after yesterday i was already on the fence uh after the wreck in turn 12 earlier this year and i was like i just i hate doing it man i hate being in that position of no control and um you know i, I think i told you yesterday like maybe this is arrogance on my part feeling like I've done this for so long that I can foresee something that's about to happen and fix it from the right seat before it does. And, um, and maybe it's arrogance on my part thinking that and not bringing this guy in and talking to him, you know, before this happened. Cause I saw, you know, I saw warning signs, but it wasn't anything that was like super outrageous. He just, you know, he got amped up. Uh, he got amped up being around fast cars and being in a train of fast cars and that kind of stuff. And he, you know, was paying attention to them more than what he was doing. And I backed him off. I backed him down. But um, he told me, too, he was like, 10 was not a corner I expected to have a problem in. And, like, I get that. I understand that because it's a slow corner. But, um, you know, it goes back to, like, when I tell you to do something, you got to do it. Right? And regardless of what you do. anymore. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's not a suggestion, right? And And, like – Dude, when we joke around, we say when in doubt, flat out. That's a joke. <laughs> Dude, I, we don't mean it. <laughs> so get off the gas. Don't crash faster. Like, why the? Why are you still on the gas? It doesn't make any sense. So. Beat the wall there. That's tough, man. Yeah, and like, it is tough because, like, if you are in the right seat, like, you see things, or like, even looking at video, like, you'll see things that's like, okay, like, Like there's little, like there's things that you'll see and especially if you're in the right seat that you'll feel and it's like, okay, that can become a problem. That can become a problem. And like a lot of the times it's hard to talk about it in the moment because it's such a minute thing oh, yeah. that being like, uh, Dude, I say all the half time is yeah. being just too close to the edge of the road, right? Like right. coming through six or coming in the 10 that road Atlanta. Like if you are, if the car moves at all, like if the car has any kind of wiggle in it, like you're going to drop a wheel and it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and there's multiple times that I'll be like, you know, I'll see something and I'll say a quick something about it. And I'm like, but we're going to talk about that when we're done. Like, you know, I'll say that quickly. And it's like, it's not something that, you know, I, I feel like is going to be a huge issue, but it, if it's like something that it's, it's like dropping a tire, it's like, all right, let's, let's move that thing over just a little bit, <laughs> but you're on the paint. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in that situation before too. And, and, um, 
a long time ago in an R8 at Road Atlanta. And it was like, we were in the wet and this guy was braking, you know, and you know how the R8s like with the rear engine, they, or the mid engine, they, they move around so much right under braking. And uh, dude, he was, he was running the white line coming down into 10. And I was like, dude, I was like, you need to give yourself two feet to that right side. And sure as shit, man, like one of the times he came in, that thing started walking and it walked to the right a little bit, dude. And I was like, that's what I was talking about right there. And he was like, I see. I was like, dude, that would have been where he was before. Yeah, we would have, he would have dropped the right rear and we would have, we would have hit the wall on the left side uh, down there in 10. It would have been ugly. So, but yeah, it's just, just little things. But yeah, man, I, I, I feel like I now looking back, you know, you can always say like, what if, or I should have like all that kind of stuff, all, all you want. But I mean, in, in, at the end of the day, dude, I saw what was happening, uh, you know, 10 seconds before we actually had an impact and I was correcting it, telling him like, you know, get off the gas, get off the gas, stop, 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 stop. And, um, it just, you know, he, he had his own thought process of what he should be doing. Yeah. And, um, and he, and it, I understood what he was saying though. Like he, he felt like if he got off of the gas quickly that the car would have spun, which in theory, yes, that typically could happen. But, um, but at the same time, like I know what I'm doing, <laughs> doing this for half my life. So if I tell you to do something, do it, you know? Yeah. Even, I mean, sometimes, you know, if that's, those are your two options. Like I'll take a spin down the hill and end up in the grass than just driving into the wall. Because yeah. one's got a fighting chance at not hitting something and maybe just yeah. energy versus just – Yeah, dude, and, and, <laughs> dude, like, and that's hindsight, of course, you know. Sure, but here's the other thing. Like, if you're off the track, why are you still on the gas? <laughs> like, get off the gas. If no tires are touching pavement, let's get off the gas and gather this thing back up, yeah. right? So it, it just – yeah. So you guys went off. You guys exited the track on the left and then yeah. finished your crash on the right. Yeah, so we we were by the time we got complete, we, we ended up by the time we were halfway up the hill, the left sides were in that gully that they've built out oh, there sure. outside of the uh, you know outside of the curbing, yeah. and the right sides were on the curbing, and dude, the car is just bounding right, and he's still in power, and I'm like, get off the gas, get off the gas, get off the gas, and dude, we got right to the top, and it like bounce, bounce, boop, and just took a hard right, and. Um, Dude, I tell you what, man, that you talk about hopeless, dude. I've had I've had a few big ones and it's quite a hopeless feeling when you're watching what you're about to hit and it's like this this is going to suck. <laughs> Damn, that's gonna crazy. Hurt. I mean, yeah, if you're a <laughs> the key takeaway here, if you're off track, go ahead and back it down. Like yeah. get it off track, go ahead and back it down. Like I said, man, the when in doubt, flat out thing is a is a joke. We don't mean it. <laughs> no, that's don't crash faster. <laughs> yeah, don't crash faster. I like that. <laughs> um, was there any in car video? Uh no, no, there wasn't. Um, and he was his third ever track day in the blue group already. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't really agree with that there Be- because it, I, I'll tell you, I think the number one contributing factor to this accident is being around fast cars that he would not have been around in a lower group. And I think he was trying to keep up and he was trying to be quick with them, with people that have more experience and have faster cars. And um, I think it was, it just got to him, right? Like he's trying to push too hard too soon and it bit him. Like it, that kind of thing happens. I get it, but you gotta, we gotta take baby steps in this thing, right? Like it's, it's still very dangerous what we're doing. So um but like I said, man, shit happens. <laughs> shit happens, and then unless you're here to tell, but talk about it and tell the story. Um, shit happens, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> Have you checked in with him today? Make sure he's like feeling all right. And- I haven't yet. I've thought about it. Um, I was gonna actually wait and see if he reached out to me because I didn't do anything wrong. That's fair. <laughs> but dude, he's hey, hey, like if he were to see this or like anybody that knows him sees this, like. Dude, I, I like the guy. He made a mistake. He was super apologetic. He wasn't an arrogant shit like we see a lot of guys be. Like he was he, – he just – he made a mistake, dude. And we make him. It happens. He completely owned it. And uh, the situation sucks ass. I hate it for both of us. But, you know, it's happened. It's time to move on. So, yep. and, and really the bigger reason that we, we talk about this today is to learn from it. Um, sure. You know, we're not, it is, there is some entertainment here, I suppose, but like, it's, it's more about learning from it and preventing somebody else from wearing or having it happen. And, you know, just 
how we can all build and grow. And we're not trying to shame anybody here. Yeah. But where, where are your damn Hans, Patrick? Get you a Simpson. I know you're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, like, we're going to start a – what's today? The – 12th of August. So we'll see how long this no right seating ever. Thing <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, once I start, once I start losing all my money, I'm going to be like, Oh God, I need to, I need to get back in the right seat. And somebody's going to call me up and be like, here's $1,200 to come, come right seat. I'm like, all right, well I got to pay my mortgage. So yeah. All okay. right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> GTA, yeah. yeah What's it cool. You can just price people out. I mean, I know people that charge, there's a guy that charges double that for right seat. Yeah. And like, you know, if you're going to do it, do it. Like, I don't know. Like I obviously prefer data video, but like, I think there is like a premium to like right seating because it is so dangerous. Um, sure. I agree. So. And, but here's, here's the other thing too. Like I know a driver that, um, he had, I don't think he had this at the time, but he has at the time of this big accident that he had, but, um, he now has these contracts that he makes people sign before wow. he gets in a car with them. And, um, and and this all this all came about because he had a had a massive accident at Road Atlanta in the right seat of a race car, and it it essentially ruined his career, ruined his racing career. And um, so now he's got these contracts that that say like, look, I'll ride with you, but if you put us in a wall, you're either paying me thirty thousand dollars or you're going to pay for all of my all of my hospital bills that you know, that I have to have to have from, from this. So, um, and I think that's a good thing, you know, to, to have that in writing and, and hold people accountable. Cause I think it'll, it'll, you know, make people think twice, um, about doing dumb shit. So yeah, for but, sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad you're all right, man. I'm glad, you know, cars can be replaced. People can't. Um, so, well, I appreciate it. I know. I'm glad somebody likes me still being here. That, that feels good. I do. You're my boy. It's been too long. <laughs> my boy, Blue. I've known you since freaking high school. Um, all right. I think we'll skip the, the next topic. I think we'll save that for the next one. Oh, you think so? Yeah, oh, I think we'll save it for the next one. Ooh, uh, man, I was looking forward to it. I mean, we can talk. I, so I'm. my problem is I'm. I'm. the race is going to start in 19 minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not starting in there. Yeah, race. but you're not starting. I'm not starting. Yeah, but it's about to get real loud. <laughs> oh, we have 84 true. cars here at VIR for the 24th. Hey, I think we could knock this out in 20 minutes, dude. I think we could. But it's up to you. You're you're the you're the boss here. All right. Um, what yes. other topic was there? So it's uh, we've got the one that we pre-discussed, and then we've got and this can all get cut out. So Adam, cut. Uh, <laughs> be funny if he doesn't cut it uh <laughs> so that we've got like air oh yeah i want to talk about airport travel and all that oh yeah uh, dude the travel hacks that's been pretty it's been pretty fucked lately so uh, <laughs> yeah, nice. let's let's talk about travel so uh all right cut back in all right so <laughs> all right airport hacks and travel and so just like airports lately have been terrible uh if you've been traveling as much as we do or even travel at all i'm sure you've noticed uh, constant cancellations and delays and just backed up TSA lines and you name it. Um, I've noticed, so I recently, how I almost missed two flights in one week because uh, the Atlanta airport decided that it was just going to have no parking. Um, yeah. And when I say decided, they literally just closed the garages. Like you could see tons of parking mm-hmm. and they just decided that you weren't allowed to park there. Um, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, pit lane with IMSA where it's like, nope. <laughs> you're not allowed to be here. It's like, but I'm already here. I am the uh, captain now. <laughs> the light isn't on. Um, but yeah, so I like, I found out, like I went to check my bag. I'm like, yeah, we don't know if it's going to make it. I'm like, okay, then it just goes on the next plane. Like whatever, we're going to Daytona. And uh, this was June. And it's like, that's fine. Like I'll get it's The track is right next door to the hotel or the airport in the hotel. So it's like, I don't care. Like, well, if I move your bag to the next flight, then like I have to move you too. And it's like, what? Like, just try to put it on my flight. And then if it doesn't make it, it's okay. It's like, well, if we don't know for sure, and it's just like, I think I just got a gate agent that, or not a gate agent, but a a bag agent that wasn't having, was just over it. And uh, because she wasn't nearly that polite. But um, (laughs) what I found was that you can just take all your stuff through TSA. Like, it wasn't, like, a small carry-on. Like, I had my helmet, my backpack, and then I had, like, a medium-sized roller bag. 
mm-hmm. and I just drug it through TSA. They sent me down to like lane lane nine that doesn't use the the little bins, and like yeah. I just ro- like it went through security, and then I just checked it at the gate. That's interesting. So, so if I'm you're really- late or you're tight on time, uh, just take all your shit with you through security, and then I just check it at the gate. And then half the time they'll let you get on the plane early if you don't have status. If you yeah. check a bag, they'll let you get on early. So like win win. Interesting. Interesting. That's that's good to know. Um I I don't want to give up my hack because I don't want people to fucking know it. So there's like 13 people are gonna watch this. It's fine. That's true. Um so mine is um 1300. <laughs> yeah. Mine is uh parking and which terminal to go through. Um, so I always park at international, uh, parking and then take their little shuttle over, which is a two minute, you know, drive from the, from the parking deck, international parking, park and ride, uh, to the terminal, you go through international. This is, uh, this is if I'm not checking a bag. Um, if I'm, if I'm not checking a bag, I'll do this. I'll go through international and dude, there's like maybe the most I've ever seen, uh, the most the most people I've ever seen in front of me has been like twenty people. Ever. Yeah, it's empty. Yeah, there's nobody there, and dude, you go straight through and easy, super super easy. So that's a good one because um, there is always no line. What's interesting over there is pre check is only open in like certain hours, mm-hmm. uh, but like is the line so short you don't need it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think it even matters there. Yeah, and to make that tip better, you can actually check your bags at international. Yeah, you can. Um, the The only problem is, is that when you come back, if you've parked at International, you have to. Um, I know there is a bus though that will go from domestic terminals to international parking. So you have to get your bags at domestic, find that bus, and then get over to International. Um, it'll it'll drop you off at the International terminal, and then you have to get on the other bus and make it back to the parking. Or if it's easier to just go get your car. And then yeah. drive around. Oh, oh dude. Like, so listen to this. Listen to this crap. All right. Coming back from um, from one of our races, I want to say, I want to say maybe it was Canada. Um, it was like, you know, it's in July and they said it's going to be like the busiest week uh, of the year at the Atlanta airport. So Lindsay and I are coming back and dude, the, the, it's insane how packed the airport is. It was, I've never seen it like this before, dude. Like uh, whatever, whatever gates we were on, I think it was D dude, the, the P all the people were overflowing into the walkway and you couldn't walk. Like there was one line of people like snaking through. It was insane. But dude, we get back and we get off the plane, get my stuff. Didn't really take that long. I'm like, man, this is a breeze. Things are going well. When I walk outside, usually to get on the international bus to get back to the parking deck, there's nobody there ever. It's me and like maybe two other people that are ever standing there. I walk out, dude. We walk out. There are at least 60 people standing in this line. And I'm like, there's no way. There's no way this is for this bus. And dude, like I am very impatient. And I (laughs) know. I know. I don't like waiting in lines. It drives me insane. And so I walk up to this lady and I was like, Hey, I was like, uh, I was like, this isn't for international parking ride. Right. And she was like, yeah, it is. And I'm like, dude, Oh my God. And so I'm like starting to sweat, dude. I'm like freaking out. So we stand in this line and we're standing there and I'm like, dude, we are 0.9 of a mile away from where we need to go. I was like, there isn't uh there is no walkway, but like we could definitely walk this. And then I was like, Lindsay, there's there's cabs down here. I was like, will you go check with a cab and see if he'll take us one mile? And she goes down there, she comes back, and dude, she's pissed. She's so pissed. And she's she's like, this guy and like all this all this shit. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, what what happened? What you do dude, this little princess. This dude was gonna charge like it was over twenty dollars to go one mile because it was like, well, you got this cab fee and then you got the the mileage fee and like all place. this crap, dude. And there was some other guy down there apparently that was just fucking giving this guy the business. 
uh, as well, just yelling at this other cab driver, like, this is insane, dude. So we ended up, you know, we ended up standing in this line for like probably 40 minutes or something like that to get on a damn shuttle to, to the terminal or to the parking deck. Unbelievable. I'm probably would have, I don't know. Hindsight's always 2020, but I probably would have painted the guy. I was having to come apart, dude. Like I internally, internally, I was just like, I'm going to murder somebody. It was, it was rough. It was if rough, had, dude. If I had a nickel for every time I've seen you have a come apart, I'd probably, I would have had enough money to pay for that cab. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd, pay, you'd probably be able to pay for two cabs. Yeah, I could get a round trip. Get one for you, one for me. That's right. Damn, that's yeah. I mean, travel's been nuts. Like, uh, so we were coming back from Road America last weekend, and uh, so we were delayed two hours, which kind of like getting out. Of, we flew out Sunday night after the race, so like that wasn't terrible because it gave us a chance to go to Seepkins, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, so like that didn't suck. And then um, so we were delayed two hours, and then we were delayed like another hour at the actual airport, and then. Uh, I mean, there was a storm coming, and then we sat on the ground for an hour, and it was a two-hour flight, and then we sat, like, in Atlanta, like, we were on the ground in Atlanta for, like, two hours after we landed, and, um, but we were on the plane for four hours. Like, no. it was ridiculous. Um, God, that's insane. It's just been, like, a tra- like we flew out of Watkins uh, earlier this year, and I guess last month. Or it was end of June, but we like we flew when we got. We were trying to get out of Watkins. Like they were diverting traffic into Syracuse, and like they were just sending people home. They're like, nope, like not happening. Come back tomorrow. Yeah. Call Delta yeah. to reschedule because it's we don't even know if it's going to happen tomorrow. Dude, people that's... like Jamie Price had to drive home for like the third time this summer from really? he drove back from Wisconsin. Um, and the trend that I've seen is obviously there's like been some crazy weather and stuff going on. But the trend that I've noticed is, like, if you're going to fly, it seems like the first three to five flights of the day make it out. Mm-hmm. The middle third or, like, the right after half, like, then the middle ones are delayed. And then the last, like, one or two are canceled. So, yeah. like, don't be on that last flight. So go you're early. Gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go early. I try and travel early most of the time anyway. I just – I'd rather get down there and get it done with, you know, just – just be done with that that situation. I have to. Yeah. I try and I try and uh, maneuver my flights around Atlanta traffic. Also, like I'm either going super early or I'm going at like 11 a.m. Like when you know when traffic's died down and that kind of stuff. Oh, I mean that's like for if you guys like us that we're we're off during the week. Like you know we got Monday Tuesday off essentially. Like everything I do is scheduled and based off of traffic. Yeah, like yeah, I'm either out of the door and like I am out of Atlanta by seven at the latest where yeah. I'm at home until nine. Like there is yeah. no in between. I got a doctor's appointment. Guess what? It's at 10 30. Like I'm yeah. not going anywhere. Like, Dude, once, once I pass the, pass the threshold of noon, I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere the rest of this day. It's like it's I go to the pool, cool. please. Yeah. All right. I think we're about to get loud here. Oh man. Look at those pretty cars. Huh? Look at all those pretty cars. I know. They're actually, there's some nice cars here. Look at all 84 cars, baby. All right. There's going to be 32 that finish. Drink that beer. Yee yee. They're still coming. There's our friends at Open Throttle. Hey, friends. Hi, friend. There's uh, Speedworks and their three boxsters. They're still coming. There's more. That's what she said. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Easy. Uh, the Rockwells. Not not a fan. Yeah, you got to run with them in TCR quite a bit. Not a fan. You know, I didn't see our car, which is actually concerning. <laughs> I drove it this morning. Uh, so I drove this car last year in this race. And um, 
I was supposed to, we were supposed to be testing it at Red Atlanta this weekend, getting ready for the Fall Historics, and the car wasn't ready. There we are. Oh, that's good. Was that P last? Uh, close, yes. <laughs> we're like fourth. Well, they just pick a random grid spot. Yeah. And then they're yeah. like, all right, go ahead. Like, that's where they start, and they just go down the pit stalls. So I guess they're right behind us. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, so- we're starting 80th, presumably. We're like fourth from the end. Nice. Um, so we like, you know, everybody likes a good comeback story, right? Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, <laughs> what was uh, what was the comeback story from Parks and Rec? Dude, it, yeah. uh, <laughs> like Kim uh, Kardashian. Yeah, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> she got coming her back. Yeah. Dude, Chris Pratt's fucking awesome. Uh, that's awesome. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> You're gonna be the next Kim Kardashian story, dude. That's Could awesome. Be. I mean, racing's in the family, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. Well, well, Bruce raced. Caitlin doesn't. Does it? Yeah, well, Caitlin owns a team. That's true. That's true. She owns, she's a, owns a women activist program in Formula and women. Uh, she owns a team in the women's series, is what it is. Yeah. The w series. Yeah. Man, what a great what a great series that is, huh? That's a good one. Yeah, Formula 3, baby. Those are cool, <laughs> cool cars. <laughs> Uh, Actually, I don't sorry. know. About that series, sorry, yeah. I, that's for another time. Yeah, you can cut all this out, Adam. <laughs> you can just end with the cars going by. No, um, no, all right. Well, thanks to Paper Street Racing for having me on this weekend. It's good to be here, here racing and uh, and spend more time in a race car at a, one of my favorite tracks. So good talking yeah, about buddy. that. Yeah, man. Hey, y'all, hit me up and buy these shirts. Let everybody know that you failed in life. <laughs> Just like me. We do have, uh, it sounds like we're going to have some new shirts coming from Pitbox Social with Wallet yeah. and Go Home. So yeah. Pat's working on those. That's been a, that's something we've said for, I mean, we're coming up on 10 years. 10 years, years now, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Wallet you know, Pat, and go home, boys. Pat crashed, you know, they had their crash before lunch and then he got to go home. So, <laughs> Wallet and Go Home. So we got fun things. There's more cars. All right. Y'all have a great weekend. Uh, if you're watching or you see the race, we're, I'm at the 641 at Paper Street Racing. So you guys have a good weekend. We'll talk to y'all soon. Go. Peace. Peace.